Today on the podcast, I want to talk to you about the seven habits of highly effective people. I'm going to do a quick review of the book in general, give you a few of my thoughts, and I hope it's something that will help you to create some great habits in your life. These are powerful lessons in leadership and personal change. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, welcome back to The Daily Mastermind. George Wright III here. Today we're gonna do a summary of a book that is just a classic. You know, after 25 million copies sold in 40 languages, this book has become a literal icon in the field of personal development and leadership. And the book is by Stephen Covey. It's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Powerful Lessons in Personal Change. And I'll tell you what, what I love about this book and the reason I've gone back to it is that um, Stephen Covey's been very well known for his lessons, thoughts, and habits um, that he's taught for you know transformation and leadership and increasing effectiveness in your life. But this book has just such a concise way of putting it together. So my goal here today is to give you a high level review of the entire book so that it'll inspire you to have you know ideas and also potentially rekindle your interest in going back to the book for some strategies and, and things in your life. So the book has a quote that I love, and the quote is, people can't live with change if there's not a changeless core inside them. The key to the ability to change is a changeless sense of who you are and what you're about and what you value. The reason I really love that quote is that's something that can be a real foundation in your life, and, and, and really it's the premise of the entire book because Covey created this whole book on the premise that your inner success comes before your outer success. He says, private victory must precede public victory. It's basically personal mastery first. And this is something that is very aligned with what we have in our community, right? The Daily Mastermind community. So he goes on to talk about how habits are the building blocks of change that you want to create in your life. And real, and real change is the result of slow development over character, your character over time. And daily habits of thinking and acting are what ultimately greatness are built upon. So the seven habits of highly effective people is not just a, it's not just a get rich quick or a silver bullet for greatness. It's really more about the slow, deliberate change over time to build your character and create your ultimate destiny. And the quote uh, in this book that he kind of has as well that I really love by Charles Reed summarizes what he's trying to do with the book. He says, Charles Reed said, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an action and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. That's such a great quote. Another important note about the book before we cover the seven habits is the distinction that Covey draws between this idea of effective versus efficient progress. See, so many of us are caught up and worried about our time management and our priorities and things like that, when efficiency is not the primary objective we should be chasing. He says, think about what's most important to you and see if it's at the center around which your life resolves, revolves. Don't worry about efficiency. There is, uh, there is uh, let's see here, no use being efficient if what you're doing lacks meaning or an essential good. So the bottom line here is that effectiveness will always trump achievement or efficiency all day long. And so that's something I really wanted to kind of point out to you there as well. So let's go ahead and get into these habits now. Um, habit number one is be proactive. Be proactive. Your life, I'm going to give you a quote right out of the book here. Your life doesn't happen. Whether you know it or not, it's carefully designed by you. The choices after all are yours. The cho you choose happiness, you choose sadness, you choose decisiveness, you choose ambivalence, you choose success, you choose failure, you choose courage, you choose fear. Just remember that every moment, every situation provides a new choice. And in doing so, it gives you a perfect opportunity to do things differently to produce more positive results. Every day is a new day, right? So being proactive in life, this, this habit of being proactive, is all about being responsible for your life. The way that we're responsible is by being proactive. Proactivity is your ability to respond to situations, good or bad situations, in a way that helps you accept responsibility for choosing the direction and course you're going to follow. 
the decisions you know that you're making will affect how you respond to the situation so proactive people for example take responsibility for their lives and actions um, and, and you have to analyze really whether you're a proactive versus reactive person and what's the difference well proactive people they choose their behavior and and proactive people take control of their emotions and proactive people direct their intentions and actions towards what they want whereas reactive people let other people choose their behavior they react and reactive people believe that they're uh, that other people kind of control their emotions because they give away their power they give away their emotions to things other people do and say also reactive people let other people direct them and tell them what to do and the bottom line of this habit is that reactive people are affected by and react to their environment which is really giving up your responsibility for the outcome you have in life you know reactive people shift blame they have attitudes that kind of go up and down their emotions are all over and they don't take responsibility and what Covey suggests here is that one of the best ways to become proactive as a person is to control the quality of your language your language because see what you say creates the quality of your life and 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 when you say phrases like I can I will I prefer these are being proactive reactive people say I can't I have to if only you know those kind of words and so your language makes a big big difference in being proactive he also drops one of the most important lessons of the book that I've used many, many times in my life. He says, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So when something happens to you, you have a moment between when, it sti when the stimulus happens and when you respond that you can choose how you're going to react. And so you have a point that you determine your power to choose this response. And also the most important thing you can do is to choose how you talk, your language. So this habit is really the core of the principles and habits in this book. And that's why I've kind of spent the most time on this in general. But one more thing I want to kind of mention about this is the problems, challenges, and opportunities we face in life all fall into these two areas of your circle of concern or your circle of influence. You know, things that you're just concerned about you have no control over and things that you do have control over. And to be a proactive person, you've got to focus your efforts on your circle of influence and things that you can do something about. And avoid being a re reactive person by not wasting your time on things you can't do anything about. And so that's habit number one. And, and I know we're taking up a bunch of time here, so I'm going to kind of go through these other ones quickly. But habit number two is begin with the end in mind begin with the end in mind is based on the principle that all things are created twice there's a a mental creation and a physical secondary creation and this is much like uh, you know the carpenter's rule right measure twice cut once and so you have to figure out what you want in life um, and it's important to do that inner work and really determine the vision of what you want or else you may end up with something that you don't want um, and so the best way to do this is to create your destiny through exercising you know things like a uh, personal mission statement or you know your your own goals and milestones and things you want to create in your life you've got to create this before you go out and do it and this will allow you to begin with the end in mind and make daily decisions that are going to align you with your purpose passion destiny that you're creating but if you don't create that vision first you're not going to be able to create the plan to follow it so that's habit number two habit number three is put first things first put first things first Covey says habit one says you're in charge you're the creator being proactive is about your choice now habit two is that first mental creation the the vision that you're trying to create beginning with the end in mind is about your vision habit three the one we're talking about now is the second creation the physical creation so th this habit is where habits one and two come together so this habit is it's basically um, setting priorities and executing daily on those priorities that are going to take you closer to your goals and dreams and he he talks about four different quadrants of activities you have the first one is important and urgent things the second is important and not urgent the third is urgent but not important and the fourth is not urgent or important 
And I, and I encourage you to kind of really think through what activities you have that fall under these four categories, because the goal Covey talks about is to spend as much of your time as possible in quadrant one and two, which is the important but urgent things and the important and not urgent things. Those are the areas we generally don't get to because they're, not, they're very important, but they're not urgent. We want to live in those first two quadrants, and we want to avoid as much as possible the fourth quadrant, which is not urgent and not important. And ironically, many of us spend a big part of our life in these areas of not urgent and not important. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's habit number three. Habit number four is think win-win. I love this one. It, it relates very, very much towards one of our prosperity principles. Think win-win, Covey says, most people tend to think in terms of dichotomies. Um, strong or weak, hardball, softball, win or lose. But that kind of thinking is fundamentally flawed because it's based on power and position rather than on principle. Win-win is based on the paradigm that there's plenty for everyone and that uh, one person's success is not achieved at the expense of someone else's success. So this is a habit that's all about learning to come from a place of abundance and not scarcity. There's always a solution there's always a win-win in business, relationships, and life if you're just open to it. And that's why I love this habit for think win-win. Habit number five is seek to understand, then to be understood. This one's tough for a lot of us A-type personalities, right? This habit speaks for itself because it, it really focuses on the idea that we all need to develop empathy and a sense of caring about what other people think rather than just communicating what we're looking for. And we've got to seek first to understand, then we can become much more effective communicators and leaders. Okay, habit number six, synergize. Synergize. This habit is something that happens when all other habits are being applied, right? Synergy is created when people and teams are working together in a spirit of cooperation. Much like the power of the mastermind, which I love, obviously, um, synergy creates a, a result greater than the sum of its parts. Synergy is when one plus one equals three. And that generally happens when you're working, you know, as a leader in ways that help create openness, you know, for ideas and solutions and inputs from other people that are in your, in your circle of influence. And the key to this is being open, obviously, to ideas, diversity, mental and emotional differences. And, and that's something a lot of people struggle with today. And you've got to be open as a leader to creating synergy in, in your team and not just getting people to agree with you. That's not the objective. You want collaboration. Okay, the last habit, habit number seven, is sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw. And this habit is one um, where, you know, we tend to forget this because it's all about renewing yourself, your four core areas Covey talks about, your physical, spiritual, mental, and social. Sharpening the saw is about regular renewal and recharging all of the key core areas of your life. And this is so important for growth and recovery. You know, your physical development, developing your sense of well-being and health, your body, that's that first area. Spiritual is developing your sense of peace. This is through like meditation and inner reflection. To, in, to really develop and grow your spirit. And mental is developing your mind through learning and mastery of your skill, your mindset. And then social would be developing your relationships and people in your life, your, your, your social circle of influence. So this, this habit's really important because sharpening the saw, in my opinion, is, is really where you've got to learn to prioritize recovery and your core development of yourself because your ultimate potential will never be created if you don't do this. Now, overall, those are the seven habits. This book, I definitely believe, is a classic, and it deserves your time and your attention. Um, I really want you to go back and review these habits, so let's give you one last time before we go. Habit number one is be proactive. And then habit number two is... Let's see here. Okay, habit number two is... Here we go. Begin with the end in mind. Habit number three, per first things first. Habit number four, think win-win. Habit number five, seek to understand, then to be understood. Habit number six is to synergize. And habit seven, sharpen the saw. 
You know, I really do believe that modern day personal development, like Covey says, it brings awareness. But if you really want to create lasting change, you've got to develop character through these habits over time. So I hope this information is something that's brought you some value. I know we've gone a little longer than normal, but this goal, this, this whole idea that I have with the book summary is to provide you with sort of time savings, building curiosity, building awareness for all these great resources you have, like the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so I hope it's done that for you. I hope you've learned a couple of things. I hope it's some ideas that'll motivate and inspire you to grow your character and develop these habits over time. That's my message for today. I hope you have an amazing day. I look forward to talking with you more tomorrow. This has been The Daily Mastermind, and my name is George Wright III. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.